Okay, this tutorial is about uh, related rates, and this is a topic covered in Calculus 1 in college or in AP Calculus AB or BC. Okay, so you can pause the video and read the question for a quick moment, but uh, I'm going to start this question. So I'm going to first underline the key information on the question. Okay. And, uh, and I'm going to draw a picture to illustrate this problem. So we have a vertical, uh, a vertical wall, and this is my ground. And there is a wooden stick right here. Okay. And this wooden stick is 10 meters, uh, 10 feet, I mean, 10 feet. And, uh, and this wooden stick is sliding away from the wall. And as it slides, then this is going to drop down as well. Now the question states that it is starting away at the rate of 1.2 feet per second, okay, and uh, and it's asking how fast is the top of the stick right here dropping, uh, sliding down the wall when the bottom of the feet is five feet from the wall. Okay, so so it's saying this here it's five feet, and uh, we want to find out the rate. Of the stick dropping down. Now let's go ahead and label this diagram. Now I'm going to label this as X and I'm going to label this as Y. Now you may wonder why am I labeling this as X? Why not put a 5 feet over here? Because I put a 10 feet over here. The reason why I'm not going to put 5 feet over here is because of a fact. A fact that as the stick slides down this is going to change, and this is not going to stay at 5 feet all the time, so it is a variable, and since it's going to change, we are going to put a letter, okay, instead of a constant number right here, okay, and we would like to find out the rate of it drops, so basically, uh, let's see here, let's see what it's given, we know this is 10 feet, and we know that dx dt, the change of x, okay, over time, it's 1.2 feet per second. And what we're trying to find out is dy dt. Okay. Uh, we don't know that, dy dt. And we are going to find the dy dt when x is equal to 5. Now, I'm going to ask this. If we know x is equal to 5, is it possible that we can find y. Well, if you know Pythagorean theorem, then you know that we could find y. So we can find y by saying x squared plus y squared is equal to 10 squared. And uh, we have x here, so 25 y squared, uh, 100. So we have 75 is equal to y squared. y is equal to, let me see, 8. 0.66. Okay, I'm going to round it up to 8.66. All right, now, so we find out the x, we find out the y. What does it help? Well, we are going to find out dy dt, so somehow we have to differentiate, and uh, we would like to look at these three sides and find out if there's any kind of relationship that can relate these three things together. And it turns out that the Pythagorean theorem that we just used, it's perfect. It's perfect to uh, relate these three things together. So what we can do here is let me go ahead and rewrite this over here. And I'm going to make sure that I got enough room. Okay. And uh, now this is how I do my notation. So I'm going to differentiate both sides by um, uh, in respect to t. Okay, because we are looking at how fast. So we are looking at the change over time. Now, let me explain a little bit right here. When we say d over dt, that means the variable that we're expecting is t. Now, as we said earlier, we are also expecting x and y to change as the wooden stick slides down. So what is going on here? We don't see t in the expression, and these two are changing. A little bit confusing, right? So let's go ahead and make things a little bit more clear. x and y, they are changing, 
but we are not going to say they are the variables. What we're going to say is that they are actually uh, functions. Okay, let me say functions. Functions of t. Okay, these are functions of t. So x and y, they would change as t changes. Their values depending, depend on time, okay? Now, what are we going to do as we differentiate these? Okay, well, it's going to go, we'll go ahead and apply our differentiation rules. And that becomes zero because uh, deriving a constant is zero. And now this is what we learned in the past, okay? It's, uh, it's about chain rule. This is going to be 2x times dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Now, if you are confused, why do we have to have dx dt? Why can't we just say 2x? We used to do 2x before. Well, the reason why you have 2x, just 2x before, is because you did this. d over dx of x squared. Now, see here, you're deriving this thing when you expect x to be your variable, and x is indeed your variable. So, you can just go ahead and write down 2x. But, when you say d over dt of x squared, now, t is your expecting variable, and you don't see that. And that's what we see, what we said earlier. You are anticipate, you are considering x and y as function of t. So, you are seeing two functions right here. You are seeing a quadratic function, and you are seeing the x itself as a function. Therefore, you will differentiate the outside function, which is the quadratic function, and that explains why you have 2x. And you have to differentiate the inner function, which is the x function. And that's how you get dx dt. Okay, now let's go back to here. Do we have x? Yes, x is given. Do we have dx dt? Uh, yes, okay, it is given. Do we have y? Yes, we calculated it. Do we have dy dt? No, because that's exactly the thing we want to find out. So, we'll just go ahead and substitute numbers. dx dt, 1.2, and uh, we have this, and dy dt, it's going to be 0, and uh, if you go ahead and calculate all these, you will have, uh, this is 10, 10 times 1.2, it's 12. You move it to the other side, you get negative 12 here. This is 17.32 dy dt, and dy dt, it's going to be, it is going to be negative 0.69 feet per second, meaning that the wooden stick is going to slide down at the rate of 0.69 feet per second. Okay.